Hey guys and welcome to another very exciting vlog. Now quite a while ago I released a video on this channel called the best computer for Adobe After Effects and given it's been a little bit over a year I figured it's worth a follow-up. First off, I've started filming these vlogs with a handheld camera. Obviously it's a little bit more shaky, but it also means I can move around a little bit more easily and I feel it's you know, just a little bit less boring and static than the camera just sitting on a tripod. But definitely let me know down in the comment section below whether you prefer this format. Now the video I want to talk about in this vlog is a video that I released in January 2015 I believe. So it's over a year ago and it's called the best computer for Adobe After Effects. Uh, you can check it out, there's gonna be a link up here somewhere. The reason I want to talk about it is because it's probably my most interactive video. I get the most feedback and comments and questions on that video and people argue their heads off about what is the best computer. So it's something I really want to discuss. Now obviously the video is labeled the best computer for Adobe After Effects which is mainly just so that people can find it because nobody's going to find for what's an average computer in After Effects. But it is really important to understand that what is best depends on you. It depends on your budget, on your requirements and your personal preferences. Now, in my opinion, the most important thing when you're picking a computer that you want to use for filmmaking and especially After Effects, which can be pretty computationally expensive, um, is what are the requirements? What do you need the computer to do? How fast do you need it to go? How big does your hard drive need to be? What monitors do you need? Do you even need a desktop? Do you need a laptop because you're moving around so much? Um, or there's a lot of other questions that you need to figure out in what do I need to solve what I'm trying to achieve with the computer because unless you know that you don't even know what to look for. Then the second question becomes your budget and this is really hard to judge because you can get pretty good computers probably for around six to eight hundred dollars. Um, you might get cheaper ones if you get them second hand or you know, you can obviously go absolutely ballistic and pay tens of thousands of dollars for some server rendering farm that's sitting somewhere if you consider that the best. But you obviously have to figure out, once you know what you need, you need to figure out how much money do I want to spend or what's my budget limit. And you then have to start looking for a computer or the components, if you're going to self-assemble, that match those requirements as best as they can within your budget. And finally, once you've figured out what you can afford within your budget, then it comes down to personal preferences. A lot of people say, well, you know, why would you bother assembling your computer? Just get a Mac. I'm like, well, if you like Mac OS, personally, I've had a MacBook Air for a while. I've had a MacBook Pro for a while. So I feel I gave it a fair shot, but coming from a Windows background, I just, I just prefer it. I just, it feels more natural to me. I feel less limited with it. And um, while I really love the quality of Apple, like the quality is absolutely pristine, it's amazing. Um, you do pay quite a hefty bit of extra money just for the brand and just for the styling and some of the other aesthetics around it. And so if you're really just looking at the hard specs, you can get the same specs for quite a bit less money. Obviously it doesn't come as polished or as packaged and not as well supported, but it really depends on your personal preferences at that point. It's no, this is better than that necessarily. It just really depends on what do you feel comfortable with? What can you afford? And does it really meet your requirements? One thing I want to mention as well is I feel quite comfortable assembling my own computer. A lot of people don't, but I kind of grew up with it back from the days where I think my first computer was an X286, I believe it was X286 or the one that came before that. Um, so I've always kind of assembled my own computers over the years. I kind of feel pretty comfortable. I know a lot of people don't. It's pretty easy these days because there's no more screws. All of the plugs are bundled together and they, you know, usually signal so you can't plug them in the wrong way. It used to be all just individual cables that you just had to connect all over the motherboard and if you got something wrong you pretty much fried your electronics. So it's gotten a lot easier these days but technology moves so fast within a couple of weeks, a couple of months, there's all these new components, all these new parts, and you have to re-research everything. So what I usually do is that about a month or two before I feel I need or want a new computer, I figure out what's my budget, and I then go on all these hardware websites that do reviews, tech specs of all of these bits and pieces, and figure out what can I afford within the budget, and then it's just all about getting the main components. You need a motherboard, you need a CPU, you need hard drives, you need RAM, you obviously need a case for your machine, um, a cooler if you care for some fancy cooling or if you want to overclock your CPU. Um, so it's just around figuring all of those things out. And there's a lot of information online. A lot of people ask me, like, what do you think of this graphics card versus that graphics card? I'm like, I don't know. I 
I, I don't test hardware. I've got one computer that's lasted me for a year. Um, you have to go off and do your own research online. You have all the information there. There's test results and everything you need. Um, obviously, there is assuming that you want to self-assemble your machine, which you don't really need to. You can also go to your local computer store and just kind of tell them what you want, what your budget is, and they'll probably put something together for you. The only thing you have to be quite careful about is that if you're asking in online forums or on YouTube videos or anything like that, everyone out there, everyone out there thinks they're a computer expert. Everybody's gonna tell you, you're doing it wrong, you should be getting this, 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 this. It doesn't matter what they want. Just because a friend tells you you need a sports car that's gonna cost you, like why would you, if, if you're not gonna race it, like why get a sports car? If you are gonna race it, sure, get a sports car, but everyone, again, it's to understand that the best computer depends on your requirements, your budget, and your personal preferences, not on what someone else has seen somewhere or they've tried for themselves and liked it. Obviously, if you're talking to your close friends or your family and they recommend you something, you can probably take that a bit more serious, but especially online, you will find a lot of people with very strong opinions. Um, so you just got to take everything with a grain of salt. Some people have valid points, fair enough. Um, and it's good to just inform yourself. There may be features that are worth knowing about like um, CUDA or CUDA, um, which is basically using your graphics card for CPU calculations get offloaded. Uh, it's quite useful if you're using After Effects or Premiere because they do utilize um, graphics card that have that capability. But it's more just if someone tells you something and says, this is what you should get, go off, have a look, what is it? What does it do? How much does it cost? Do I really need it? Because yeah, online, everyone's a computer expert. Um, so it's just something to be, you know, just be careful about just buying it as the first thing that someone recommends you online. Now, as I showed you in the video where I assemble my own computer, my CPU, which is the main piece of processing power in my machine is an Intel i7 4790K, um, codenamed Devil's Canyon. I'm really happy with the CPU. Obviously, if you're using Adobe After Effects really intensively and you're doing 3D rendering and stuff like that, it's gonna slow down. Unless you have a server farm, like a render farm with 50 machines sitting in the back end, it's gonna take time, like even if you get a powerful PC. I got 16 gig of RAM, DDR3, I've never run out and I do run After Effects Premiere, Audition Photoshop, and then I've got like 20 tabs in Chrome open um, that all spawn the individual processors and whatnot. So RAM wise, 16 GB of RAM is certainly sufficient for me. I haven't had any issues with it. Um, yeah, I don't feel sad that I didn't get 32. I'm pretty happy with the 16 gigabytes. To me, the one thing that made a huge difference though to the overall performance of my machine were the SSD drives. Now, I've only transitioned into SSD drives maybe five years ago, when the price started dropping into something that was a little bit more reasonable. Now you can actually get fairly cheap SSD drives. I've got two Sandis SSD drives, and I used to have um, Vertex, I think Vertex 3. Didn't like them so much, they did tend to crap out a bit more, but that was at the early stages of SSD. So nowadays, the SSD drives make a huge difference because both Premiere Pro and After Effects very heavily rely on pre-rendering a lot of things and caching that, and they're caching it to disk, which means in the background, they do a lot of write operations and read operations to and from your disk. And so if that is really, really fast, like with an SSD drive, it, it really improves the performance, not just of Premiere and After Effects, but of your whole system. So to me, SSDs, even if they're a bit more expensive, they're absolutely worth it. Um, I do have two SSDs actually. I have one that runs my operating system and all my programs. And I have a second one that then actually contains all of my media files, my project files. And the reason I've got them separated by programs and then all the data is that as the program start up, it can in parallel read all of the stuff that it needs for the data coming in or the other way around. And while it's streaming data, I can kick off new programs and they don't really interfere too much. So that setup personally for me has worked really, really well. Talking about price, and I do know that quite a few people ask me, well, how much did your computer cost or how much did this cost or that cost? For one, uh, I'm in Australia. Um, we got a lot of electronics come over from Hong Kong and from Asia fairly cheap. Um, but obviously it really fluctuates. It depends so much on the market condition. Things just double in price or half in price so quickly as demand and supply rises and falls. Um, so the best thing to do, again, start with your requirements. What do you need? Figure out your budget and then look at the prices for the components that you consider buying. Do a lot of research online and then figure out how much you actually want to spend. Um, I think my machine cost all up 1,200 Australian dollars, I think it was at the time. Um, don't regret anything I got for it, absolutely love it. Um, I do have an external CD drive because the one I did get for my machine did die, but I've just got a USB one that's like $20 and works fine. Um, and I hardly ever use CDs anymore. It's all USB or online downloads anyway. So 
not a big deal at all. Everything else works absolutely beautifully, even a year in. Obviously, every time your computer slows down for whatever reason, even you know if you're working with ginormous visual effects, you feel like, uh, maybe I should get a better one, but don't really need it. It works really well, um, so I can do all the stuff that I want to do with it at the moment. And I think that's much more important than getting the latest and shiniest thing that's out there. Find something that fulfills your requirements, that you can afford and that fits within your personal preferences and your budget, obviously. Um, and yeah, that is that is really what the best computer for Adobe After Effects or for Premiere Pro or Photoshop or anything is. Something that does what you need it to do, you can afford it and you're personally happy and comfortable with it. And yeah, that's pretty much the best advice I can give you on that. I really hope you enjoyed this vlog. As before, do let me know if you like this format where I'm hand-holding the camera. Personally, I just find it a lot more interactive. It's a bit easier to film as well, even though my arm does get tired. Um, but otherwise, if you do have any comments, questions or suggestions, as always, just leave them down in the section below. If you do want to see some cool filmmaking or visual effects tutorials, you can hop over to my main channel, which is youtube.com slash surfaced studio and subscribe. Um, it's always greatly appreciated if you like the video, favorite it and share it around. Um, yeah, but until next time, I will see you later.